Good day, STAT students. <clears throat> Today we're going to talk about section 11.1. .1. And basically what we're going to be doing is we're going to be revisiting, analyzing the association between two categorical variables. And um, so back in chapter 3 we had a rule of thumb that uh, that we used to say, hey, these, things, these variables are uh, associated or not, they're dependent or whatever. Okay. Uh, well, since we have gotten through hypothesis testing, we could use our uh, those tools to actually run a hypothesis test that actually tells us if the variables are associated. And so we will no longer use the rule of thumb, but it has the same type of principles. All right. And so let's begin here. Um, so what is associated with happiness? And so there was an actual sample that was taken. Um, <coughs> excuse me. And um, and what was looked at was uh, was this over here is family income. Okay. So family income. All right. That is the explanatory variable. So they had different levels here. They had above average, average, and below average. And then happiness, not too happy, pretty happy, very happy. Okay. And so notice we have two categorical variables. We have uh, family income, and it's not being measured with a number. <clears throat> it's either above average, average, or below average. So it turned in, once you did that, that's a categorical variable now. And happiness, not too happy, pretty happy, very happy. Okay. And so these were actual numbers that were taken from a sample of, of roughly 2,000 people. Or actually, I should say 2,000 households. All right. All right. So how can we determine if there's an association between happiness and family income in the population of all adult Americans if this sample was for, uh, if the 1,993 was uh, for, for, you know, Americans? All right. Okay. So basically, what what are we asking? Is there an association? And what in the world is causing it if there is an association? Okay. Uh, and so let's take a look here. So here are the numbers again, but do you remember what we would have to do in order to analyze this? See, remember, you can't just look at the counts. Okay. You can't look at the counts because the counts can be a little misleading because it depends on, uh, that's, that's going to be dependent upon what your sample size. Okay. And so, what basically takes sample size out as a factor is looking at the stuff as a percentage. And so we would we would remember what we, what would we would do. We would go ahead and take a look at above average uh, household incomes, families. Okay, and we had 423 of them. And then we would say, uh, okay, how many are not too happy? And then we would ask the question, what percentage of household incomes that are above average are not very happy? Okay. And, and so on and so forth. And so we would do that for this and that for that and so on and so forth. And then we would go to average and take 117 divided by 883 and so on and so forth. <clears throat> and there's all the percentages. Remember, as you work your way across, they should always add up to what? 100%, 100%, 100%, okay? So, for instance, this 19, what is that? That is the... Uh, if if your family had a below average income, all right, what percentage was very happy? And it looked like it's 19%. All right. How much were pretty happy? 56%. How much was not too happy? 25%. Okay. And so those are the those are the row those row percentages. All right. And notice that the totals turn out to be 16, 55, and 30. Okay. Hopefully that all sounds familiar to you. So if we took a look at a, uh, a graph, and the graph tells us a lot. This is why we had you, um, you know, when we have you guys do projects a lot of times and, and we have you look at two categorical variables that we have you take a look at a graph because the graph tells you a lot. Um, <coughs> and so what we did was is that we made a graph where we have uh, not too happy, we have the pretty happy, and we got the very happy, all right. So not too happy, all right. We have, um, 
you know the 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 families that were above average and then average and below average do you think that there's a significant difference between these these groups okay doesn't seem like there's much of a difference between these groups the ones that are pretty happy uh, it seems like it's sort of you know as far as it didn't matter it looked like if you were above average average or below average okay but what about what about if you were very happy does it seem like there's a difference there between the groups so wouldn't you say that this is this is sort of indicating a pretty big difference here and these are indicating a pretty d big difference here between the families okay of the different incomes it looks like it to me okay and as soon as we start seeing these differences that's telling us that somehow family income is related to happiness so since there are, are large differences between the different levels of the explanatory variables that leads us to conclude the variables are associated they related they are dependent all right large differences leads to that they are dependent they are associated all right so what does that mean if the variables are associated there are significant differences in the levels of the explanatory variable okay and so there's there looks like there's differences in the different income families all right and uh, the percentage that are happy or sad or pretty much sort of in the middle <clears throat> so let's take a look here so we got here uh, six percent for only this group not too happy 13 okay that's sort of a modest difference there but what about this 25 all right that looks like a pretty big difference between that group and that group and also between those those right that seems to me that there's that might be an association but let's continue so we don't see much of a difference between these groups right so the pretty happy it's pretty evenly split between the you know with regards to if you had above average average or below average what about very happy so the percentage that had an above average that would have very happy is 39 all right and but take a look at if you were below average income it was only 19 percent that of that, those families that were uh, that were very happy and then we have 33 with the folks in the middle and so again not that difference between those groups but surely there's a big difference between those groups and those two groups okay this is all leading to the uh, conclusion that these variables are related now this is a very um, I would say obvious example all right not everything is this obvious and so we have a test a hypothesis test that that goes ahead and runs through the five steps all right and then eventually concludes if these things are related these variables are related to one another here's another example because this is going to play a part in the next uh, next video so this time we took a look at uh, instead of uh, the different levels of income in a family we took a look at simply male and female I'm sorry I got a backwards female male all right and so notice here that 16 percent of the females is not too happy uh, for whatever reason there was 54 that was pretty happy and there was 30 that was very happy as far as the males go oh same percentage as 16 54 and 30 and so what this is saying is that gender there's really no differences in the gender okay and and so if there's no differences in the gender in this explanatory variable that means these variables aren't related gender isn't telling us anything about being happy pretty happy or very happy all right and notice our graphs here they're exactly the same heights all right and so uh, this would be an example that the variables are completely independent of one another completely independent all right so <clears throat> for two variables to be dependent or associated the population percentages and the categories are not all the same okay there's a significant there's a there's a pretty big difference okay for the two variables to be completely independent the percentages in any category of one variable is the same for all categories of the other variable okay so here independent dependent completely independent 
dependent. All right, difference, def dependent, associated, no difference, completely independent. So what we're going to do is we're going to, in part two, go ahead and run through uh, a hy hypothesis test with regards to is there an association between the uh, two categorical variables, and we'll run through the f five steps there. Before we actually run through that, um, what we have here, just to, just to give you an idea of, you know, what could be sort of on the borderline. Notice here that um, uh, this is our race and belief in life after death, independent or dependent. Okay, and so here um, we have race, okay, and post-life, and if they believe yes or no. And hmm, notice the percentages here, very close. There's somewhat of a difference between here and here. Is that a huge difference? Uh, sort of on the borderline, right? And the same would hold true here, pretty close, and and sort of, sort of like, hmm, not sure if if that's far enough, uh, it you know to see that in a sample to make sure that that's what we're going to see in the population. All right, and so this is one of those situations where, boy, you really need to run the run the hypothesis test to get a clear cut uh, conclusion. Then, so even if variables are independent, we would not expect the sample, uh, you know, conditional distribution to be identical, meaning those row percentages. Okay, so uh, so it could be that for for instance, for the females and the males here. Sure, maybe this was what it was in the population, but would we ex expect the sample to be exactly that? Probably not, but maybe we would see here 15% <clears throat> and 17% and for f females and males. And in that situation, is hopefully we would say, boy, in our sample, we just don't see a big enough difference here uh, to, to conclude that there's a difference in the population. All right, so the sample we expect always to be there difference in these row percentages, but are they far enough apart to say can we apply it to the entire, you know, pl apply that type of information to the entire population, and that's what's really going on here, okay? And so because of sampling variability, each sample percentage typically differs somewhat from from the true population uh, percentage, and that's what I was just talking about. So back in chapter three, we had a rule of thumb. But that was just a rule of thumb, and we don't want you to use it for the final. We we um, we had you use it for your projects. Uh, if we had if we gave you a project early in the semester, um, and that was just for your projects early in the semester. Here, uh, we don't want you to um, uh, use the rule of thumb anymore. We want you to do the hypothesis test because if you were going to do this in real study, uh, you would go ahead and run the hypothesis test, and that will give you a fairly you know, conclusive result then. So here in chapter 11, run the hypothesis test. Okay? Thank you.